Hey TikTok, welcome guys. Yep, got some black trumpets, I got some bluets, I got some oak candy caps, and I have some Helvella Elfin Saddle. So I'll tell you guys a little bit about these mushrooms and then I'm gonna start putting them on the dryer. So this is Clotospi Nuda, uh, the bluet mushroom, purple gills, white spores, grows appropriately under the oak trees here in Napa. So it's grown on like the dead leaves and stuff that are underneath. Um, bluets smell kind of interesting, slightly citrusy. I describe it as a uh, frozen orange juice concentrate is kind of the smell of bluets. They do cultivate them commercially in Europe. Uh, next we have the black trumpets here. So this Craterellus calicornicopides is the species we have here, but black trumpets is, is fine. That's, that's the kind of mushroom. Um, black trumpets grow worldwide. Uh, so often with different types of hardwoods. So on the East Coast, I find them under beech. Here in California, I find them under tan oak, which is not a true oak species, but you know, it is a hardwood. So black trumpets are delicious. There's really nothing else that looks like them. I've done a couple videos on black trumpets, including my recent video on the winter trio, which is great uh, edible mushrooms you can find here in California during winter on the coast. Um, here is an oak candy cap. So this is uh, Lactarius rufulus, not Lactarius rubidus, which is the one that grows on the coast. Instead, this one uh, grows on oak here in Napa. So, oh, thank you, Elsa. Um, do I make tea with these? Uh, I don't make tea with these specific candy caps. I usually dry these out. And actually, I've used them for brewing and putting in a coffee because they're a little bit, um, they're not quite as strong as the Lactarius rubidus, but the Rufulus are still decent when you dry them out, and they're just something else to look for in my habitat. Um, the one that's really cool looking and wild, kind of weird, are these elfin saddles, um, Helvella species. They have this kind of weird honeycombed stipe and weird slimy black head. Um, these are called elfin saddles. So these are toxic if you eat them straight up, but you can double boil them or you can dry them out and then treat them kind of like morels. Um, in fact, they have a flavor not unlike morels. They're kind of like a budget morel, you know? <laughs> um, and you know, morels can make you sick too if you don't cook them, cook them enough, just like Helvella can. Um, so it's, you know, it's a really good idea to uh, kind of get a sense of what you're doing when you start eating wild mushrooms. Um, it's really good to follow some of the recommendations, which are to generally cook your wild mushrooms very well, and to understand you know, the types of toxicity that different mushrooms have, because there's plenty of mushrooms that are perfectly safe to eat, but when they're raw, could make you sick, just like these Helvella. So it's good to uh, kind of understand the dynamics of what you're working with. So I'm, I like to dry these Helvella out uh, and what I'm going to do is I'll put them in my dryer. I'll put them on like the top layer of my dryer so the, the air is only hitting them and then going out of the dryer. Um, I will put them outside so that I'm not blowing any of the toxic compound into my home, which is a good idea. Um, I'll put, well, I guess I should probably put these on top. Eh? Put these on the bottom. Okay. Do, do, do. Do build up a layer, a layer in between. Okay. So, yeah, let me know if you guys have questions about mushrooms. Um, we're looking at black trumpets and oak candy caps here. We're gonna get some dirt on this stipe of this thing. Just go ahead and just like trim this off. I'm not going to be able to wash this dirt off, so I'll just cut it off, you know? So that's okay. It's okay. I'm just trim those type. There we go. And there's always a little bit of dirt on mushrooms, and that's that's all right, yeah, you know. Mushrooms taste earthy for a reason. <laughs> Usually because they have some dirt on them. But uh, it's okay. I'm going to dry these out, and they'll, they'll be great at a later date. Some of these oak candy caps are so big, I'm going to 
cut them just a little bit to help them dry more efficiently and to also help them fit in my dehydrator. So most candy caps I don't have to bother cutting in half, but these oak ones are, are bigger. And, uh, you know, there we go. They all fit just fine. Okay, put these on. Whoop. Stay there, lost a piece there. There we go. Yeehaw, we're off to the races, guys. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna clean our black trumpets. We're gonna dry these black trumpets, and we're gonna cook some bluets. That's what we're up to. So, oh hey Gabriel, how you doing? Yeah, this trumpet haul is from uh, New Year's Day, I guess. I went out with my buddy Joe and uh, found a lot of trumpets. It was you know a lot of work crawling around the hillsides, but uh, the trumpets are bumping right now. It's been raining a lot, and so the trumpets love rainy wet conditions and they come out under tan oak so they're they're coming out that's for sure i have another bag like this in the fridge but i'm going to dry about half of them um, because i never i never have enough trumpets to dry them and this is like such a luxury to be like holy cow i have enough trumpets that i can actually dry them out and preserve them for a later date which is nice too because i got a bunch of trumpets to dry out this summer, um, usually I don't find enough of these California black trumpets to ever dry any, or East Coast ones, honestly. I've just had, it's been a wet year in both the East Coast and California, so we've had a lot of trumpets, which is just, I'm very lucky. A lot of other things have been so lucky in my life this year, but that, that's okay. That's, you know, I'll take, I'll take black trumpets. That's, that's currency enough, right? So, to clean black trumpets, my favorite thing to do is to soak them. And I know some people will get kind of weird about washing their mushrooms. I am not one of those people. I think wild mushrooms are covered in dirt and you need to wash them. And, you know, anyone who tells you otherwise is probably not working with wild mushrooms. They're probably working with like agaricus bisporus from the supermarket. So, boom, there you go. Um, God, everyone always asks me about the Paul Stamets supplements. Um, yeah, no, don't. Don't waste your money on Paul Stamets supplements. Don't waste your money on supplements in general. But if you're going to buy supplements, at least don't buy supplements made from mycelium. Buy supplements made from fruiting bodies. That's just my opinion. You don't have to take it. Um, I don't take supplements personally. But if I do buy supplements, I usually get them from Far West Fungi or from uh, Mushroom Revival. Because those places use whole mushrooms in their, uh, for their extracts. And I think there's more of the bioactive compounds in a whole mushroom than there are in mycelium. If you're paying for mycelium-based supplements, you're probably getting ripped off because I've seen data and it looks like that's just mostly uh, rice bran and the substrate that they use to grow the mushrooms on. So if you wanna pay 50 bucks for a bottle full of rice bran, go for it, but I don't recommend it. So these black trumpets can be pretty dirty. And the best way to clean them is to just soak them multiple times. And I'm not worried about them getting wet because I'm going to dry them out anyhow. Yeah, Far West Fungi is great. Uh, little menstrual cup. Did you go to the Santa Cruz shop or the one at the, um, the ferry building in SF? I know they've got both. And there's also the, the farm in, Mon in uh, Moss Landing that I've been to a couple of times. The, the Far West fang family is really nice. I've met them bunch of times they're, they're good folks um, hoping to do hoping to do some stuff with them this year I talked about like maybe um, you know filming a little like visit to their farm or something like that but they're they're pretty busy and I know like my contact there just had a baby and stuff so you know some people some people are out there starting families having lives together and that's that's awesome I love to see that stuff I'm going to do one more solid rinse on these because I was still getting quite a bit of dirt coming out of them. Um, Craterellus species are hollow in the middle, and so there is a lot of dirt in them. That's a good idea to soak these. Hello, micro departures. Um, thoughts on Agaricon? What do you want to know about it? I'm sure you have preconceived notions on Agaricon. Why don't you tell me what those are before you ask for my thoughts? Uh, I think most people, a lot of people get their mushroom information from Paul Stamets, and if Paul Stamets is the only person you've ever heard talk about mushrooms, chances are you have some misconceptions about mushrooms. 
just perchance. And I, you know, I met Paul. He's a he's a decent guy. I think he means well, but I do think that some of the information he's put out into public sphere about mushrooms is somewhat problematic and uh, and probably also somewhat untrue. At least some of the stuff he said. So. Um, well, okay, first of all, the bee extracts that Paul Stamets showed held bees were from Fomatopsis and Ganoderma, I believe, not actually Agaricon. I think the Agaricon had like the lowest um, activity when I looked at the data. I could be wrong, it's been a while since I looked at that paper. But yeah, I'm pretty fo sure Fomatopsis was the most effective one. Um, so polypores in general are rot resistant, and like Agaricon is, David Aurora argues that what Paul Stamets thinks is Agaricon isn't even Agaricon anyhow. Um, but it's like Larsa foams something or other. I did I did a video on it a while ago. If you go back to my Mushroom EDU playlist, you'll see a, a video where I found the Garicon. Um, actually, here in Napa, it was really cool. And I was hoping to visit because a Garicon can live for like 80 to 100 years as these giant polypore conchs. And, uh, and then unfortunately, that area where it was burned in a wildfire. And so I don't know if that giant old Garicon is, is there anymore. But it was really neat to find one in Napa. Okay, so I'm gonna put my black trumpets on the dryer. Out, oh, hi, Tiger Paw. I know, I know. Hey, kitty. I hear you. I hear you. I just, I can't. I know, I know, sweetie. I know I'm busy. I got stuff to do. I'm uh, working with my mushrooms here, kid. The cat's just like standing on her little scratchy pad. She's so cute. Hi, Teeps. Hi there. She wants attention, but I'm busy. Okay. Hmm. We'll just keep moving along here. Put down some, uh, some more layers in the dryer. Make sure he's pointed the right way. There we go. Oriented. Yes. So we're going to lay on a, a layer of black trumpets here. And of course, if I see any pine needles or anything like that, I will take them off. These are mostly dug fir needles rather than pine, but... Yeah, I know, Teeps. Hi there. Meow. Meow. You know, if someone was here with me streaming, I'd probably ask them to, to scratch my cat while I'm busy doing this, but... Alas, I am a solo lonely mushroom man. So, there we go. Okay. Meow. Hi, Teeps. So I'm laying out these black trumpets. I'm gonna dry them. Craterellus, in general, dry well. Um, black trumpets especially dry very well. They maintain their texture. They maintain their flavor. Uh, they're just a really good quality all-round edible mushroom. That's very versatile, goes great in pastas and pizzas and stews and all sorts of stuff. Um, omelets, etc. Black trumpets are phenomenal, phenomenal edible mushrooms. Uh, no, these are culinary mushrooms. Legal, edible, culinary foraged mushrooms. There's nothing illegal or trippy about what I'm showing you guys because I cannot show you that kind of content. It's been made very clear to me that uh, I only get to show you guys wild edible stuff, generally. I've tried to show you some other cool educational things, but uh, I've gotten banned and reported a lot, especially while going live, so I'm trying to keep it real, real simple and just show you guys really easy to identify, easy edible mushrooms. That's kind of the point of what I'm doing here. So I'm going to start washing these bluets off. I picked these yesterday. I probably should have processed them yesterday, but I was lazy. So I'm doing it tonight. So I'll wash, wash my bluets. Make sure I don't have any junk underneath. Once you get dirt into the gills of mushrooms, man, it's hard to clean out. So ideally, you can like pick the mushrooms as clean as you can, get them home, get them cleaned off, and uh, and not have to deal with them being too dirty. Yeah, once you get dirt into the gills of mushrooms, it's like, oh, it's so hard to get out. Um, and the gills do really get sort of soggy. I prefer to like really only wash the cap and the stipe if I can. 
Um, I do sometimes with blue, it's just wash the whole thing because it's really full of grass and other stuff. And you know, when you do when you do cook something, all the water really does cook out. But these were pretty clean when I picked them, so they feel pretty good. I feel pretty good about cooking these. Oops, this is a little bit of dirt on the top. Let's get that off. So this, you know, it's a good one. Good thing you can do if you have mushrooms and uh, you can get them wet and use a paper towel, kind of scrape stuff off. You can use a vegetable brush. You can use a knife. You can use your nails. Whatever you want. Just get your mushrooms pretty much clean and as dirt free as possible. And don't be afraid to wash them. Water is a great way to get dirt off of mushrooms. Um, mushrooms get covered in rain all the time in nature. That's that's what they're there for. That's literally their biological function is to get rained on and then disperse spores so they can handle getting wet. And when you cook them, they end up the same whether they started out dry or wet. I know people are concerned about browning, but what you do is you put mushrooms in a dry pan, you cook off all the water, and then you add some oil and brown them. So it's, it's one extra step, but it really makes a big difference when you're cooking wild mushrooms. And this is something that I didn't used to do, but I do now, because I think it makes a really big difference, especially with these sort of wild forage mushrooms that come in pretty wet, often because they're out in the environment and they're filled with water, because it rains outside, you know. <laughs> that's, that's what it do. Okay, so I'll scoot, scoot these on. So we've got these two crazy kinds of black mushrooms here. The black trumpets and the elfin saddles. We have these purple mushrooms, the bluets. Um, good, I'm glad you like this account. Uh, to, to do woodier recipes, I put them in uh, soups, put them in spring rolls, stuff like that, where the texture is really nice. You could probably even like batter and fry woodier and have kind of a weird fried jelly thing. That might be fun. I'm drinking Napa Moscato, that's cool. Um, oyster mushrooms with scallops, yep, you can totally do that. Uh, Co-ingestion of alcohol and bluets. I've never had any issues with people having problems with bluets and alcohol, but you can al definitely always like be careful when you're trying a new mushroom and not drink alcohol. Um, mm, birch polypore for the bees, yeah. Well, I think it was, birch polypores are kind of considered a kind of fomatopsis, so I believe I was correct about it being fomatopsis, but I don't remember either. It's, uh, it's been a while. So. Um, ZT, you're asking me about books other than David Aurora's books. Yes, I have some um, well-defined suggestions. They are all linked on my website uh, under the FAQ tab, which is linked in my bio. So if you want to see my book recommendations, click the link in my bio and you'll see what books I recommend. Um, there's not a ton of books out there that I recommend right now, and I am actually working on writing a book, uh, and soon I'll be able to recommend my own book, but I gotta write it first. <laughs> In the meantime, I do think there's a few out there that are really good. Um, generally, they're ones that have been published more recently, and they're ones that have uh, really good photos, and they're somewhat regional or local in some way. It's not super helpful to have, like, you know, quite frankly, like David Aurora's um, All the Rain Promises and More book, which is like the book that everybody buys when they first get into mushroom hunting, it's really only good for like part of Northern California and it's not that great a guide for like the rest of the country. And that creates a lot of confusion because people keep referencing All the Rain Promises and More as this sort of definitive guide when it's like really just kind of a local handbook for like Northern California, Mendocino, Sonoma Coast. Um, so when I write my book, I'm hoping to make it a little bit more general. And, uh, and applicable to a lot of places. And, and what I'm gonna try to do too is stay away from defining specific species of fungi and really stick to defining sort of types of mushrooms in a general sense and give people the tools to learn for themselves and to recognize stuff um, generally as edible or toxic and, uh, and leave some of the specific species identification up to people who are more local. Um, and give people the tools to kind of approach their own education because I think that's 
that's really the best way you can do it. You can't, you know, it's not useful to just continually feed people answers. The better thing to do is try to teach them how to teach themselves. And then you have real learning, uh, which gets spread by those people and perpetuated. And then you have real change in society. So it's not, it's not just feeding people answers. It's teaching people how to acquire those answers for themselves that I, I think has real value. So here's my bluets. They're all purpley. And uh, I'm going to cook them. So I'm going to get a pan going. Uh, they're not morels. These are actually Helvella. I call elephant saddles. They're kind of like morels. They're ascomyces. Um, but they do not taste like morels. And they're, they're toxic if you eat them straight up. But if I dry them, they will become detoxified. And then I can rehydrate them and use them in a cream sauce like I would for morels. In fact, I usually blend Helvella and morels about 50-50. 50-50 in a cream sauce. And uh, that's how I do it. Okay, so turn this on. So medium highish heat. We're gonna drop our bluets in. Let's get a little closer here so you guys can see see better. Uh, all right, there we go. Sorry, coming down, coming down. There we go. All right, here's a pan. Bluets are going in. And no oil, no nothing. I'm just gonna put my mushrooms in. Boom. Okay, so there's my bloats, Clotas B. Nuda. It's a probic mushroom that grows in the oak duff here in Napa. And there's probic, which means you can cultivate them. Unlike many of the mycorrhizal mushrooms that I've shown you, like the black trumpets, chanterelles, porcini, etc., those guys cannot be cultivated. At least not easily. It's not commercially viable to cultivate them. They do cultivate truffles, uh, which are mycorrhizal, but truffles are very expensive to set up a treffery and it takes a long time and there's a lot of issues and contamination and stuff like that happens. So. Um, the blue stipes, they're not that substantial. They're a little uh, fibrous and frankly, I just, I don't think they taste as good, so I just kind of decided to leave the blue stipes out because I have plenty of the caps, you know? See, it's like not that much stipe, and there's a lot of, a lot of caps there. Um, someone gave me a gift. Thank you for that. That was very nice. Um, bike for a cause. You sent me a spider web. Cool, man. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Sukablat. I'm not sure how to say that username. But yeah, let me know if you guys have mushroom questions. I'm just kicking around, um, drying some mushrooms and cooking some bluets and chilling. You know, let me know if you have questions. Uh, still feeling a little melancholy in general, um, but you know. It's Life is, life is fine, everything's fine, I mean everything's not fine, but you know, it will be fine eventually, <laughs> it's all, it's all I can hope for. Oh, someone sent me a rose, thank you, oh my gosh, bike for a cause, you sent me another gift, autumn leaves, thank you so much. That's very kind of you. So see these are getting... You hear that little squeak that happens? That's when you get a good dry fry going. You can tell the mushrooms are sort of wet and they're just getting rid of their water. These weren't super, super wet though. That's, that's nice to see. They didn't turn all soupy. Um, yeah, ZT, for you in Vancouver, I would just recommend Mushrooms of the Redwood Coast. That's probably the best book you're going to get for the West Coast. And that's one of the ones I link on my uh, FAQ page. So that's definitely what I'd recommend for you. Let's see. Ok, 
Okay, guys. We're going through. We're cooking some bluets. I don't love the flavor of bluets straight up. Like, they're okay. They can taste pretty good, I guess. Well, we'll see. I'll put... I'll put some stuff on these and, and see how they're doing. Um, you like the knife spatula from yesterday? Yep. Yeah, this is not this is not the knife spatula, but this is another bowl scraper thing. I like to cook with these things because I can really like rim the edges of the pan. You know, give it a good, good scrapey poo. Um, I don't see any of my blade spatulas out right now. They might be hiding in a drawer somewhere or something. But I'll find them. You guys will see them again. I have two of them. I use my use my blade spatulas pretty often. I call them my pirate spatulas, you know, bowl scraper things. Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoy watching me. Um, if you if you guys enjoy watching me and you want to like hear more from me, I cook up right of my recipes for people on Patreon. Then I do have a Patreon. It's three bucks a month if you want to subscribe. Uh, I do have a Venmo, so if you want to like send me a tip, you can always send me a tip on Venmo. I have a website, so if you want to buy a t-shirt or get a calendar or like leggings, I have some other cool stuff on the website, you know, you can check that out. I've got a YouTube, I've got a Pinterest, I have a Twitter, I'm all over social media, probably in somewhat toxic ways. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm doing my best to put out good information and, and teach you guys and get people interested and fascinated uh, about fungi. And yeah, so I, I mean, really appreciate the people who support me and follow me, and it's just been such an incredible journey um, and opportunity to like teach teach so many people about mushrooms. It's been really unreal. I definitely, like, have had some sort of unplanned changes in my life recently, and it's been causing me to kind of reassess my priorities and my plans. Um, but I know that I want mushrooms to be a big part of it, and uh, we'll, we'll figure it out from there. Mm, thanks, I'm glad you guys like what I do. Sometimes I sort of wonder every day if it's worth keeping making more mushroom kind of not content or not, or if I'm just like screaming in the void. You know, I was I was hoping I'd be you know, recognized by, like, in New York Times, or somebody would, like, take note of what I was doing, want to write an article about me, and, like, maybe I'd get verified, or maybe I'd get a TV show, something like that, like, none of that has happened, but I've got some other good things going on, um, like I said, I'm hopefully going to be writing my book soon, I'm going to be starting a podcast really soon, so that's going to be on the call-in app, and I'll be posting about that on Instagram, I'll make a video here on TikTok, so yeah, if you like listening to me, talk about mushrooms, come check out my podcast, because I'll, I'll be doing more of that, and I'll be trying to address things in sort of a somewhat systematic way, and, and going through bit by bit, which I've done on lives before, but we're, we're going to start doing that on call-in on the app, um, and I'll probably just use TikTok for these late-night mushroom cooking streams, cleaning streams, I'll do my, my recipes and cooking on Instagram, and post it, and then maybe I'll put some of that stuff on YouTube. Um, right now I can't post on YouTube for several weeks because I've been like, had a bunch of content that got flagged and I have strikes against my account. It's really scary. Freaking YouTube. Like, TikTok used to c c <laughs> kick me off all the time too, but right now YouTube is really messing with me and Instagram has been screwing me recently too. People are just mycophobic. People don't like mushrooms, you know? Um, yeah, well the, the podcast will have very much the feel of my, of my TikTok stream here. But hopefully it'll be a little bit more conversational even, because people can call in and ask me questions. Uh, and I'll probably have some friends on as guests and stuff too at some point. So, it'll probably be a relatively short podcast. I'll probably do half an hour, 45 minutes, something like that. Um, we'll see. We'll see how much conversation I have. You know, you guys have seen me here on TikTok Live. Sometimes I just chat for a really long time, so... Yeah, more mushroom content. I gotta. Hopefully, there'll be a um, a documentary I filmed this year with Matador Media. I filmed that back in June. They said they'd try to have it out before end of year, but I'm hoping it'll come out, you know, maybe in the next month or two, because that'll be really cool. Matador Media was fun to work with. We did film some really cool stuff down in in Berkeley and Emeryville, talking to like scientists and biotechnology people and uh, community citizen scientist stuff about doing home cultivation and labs and all that kind of stuff. It was all, all fun, fun things. Um, I also filmed a mini documentary 
with Myco Technology, which is a company out in Colorado that I visited in July, and then I went to Oregon with one of their people in uh, October, and we hunted for the world's biggest chunk of mycelium, this giant chunk of honey mushroom that's in Oregon. So, um, oh goodness, thank you, uh, Alo Sin always, Alo Sin always for the gifts. It's very nice. Um, be in mushroom research. Oh, cool. Hey, WSU, are you, were you part of that Paul Stamets bee study? Or are you testing the ability of mushroom extracts to reduce uh, virus load in bees? I, I mean, I'm pretty sure that stuff came out of Washington University. I'm pretty sure that was the Paul Stamets project. It'd be cool if we had ELO. Thank you. It'd be cool if we had someone from that research team on our, on our live. We were talking about that earlier. Someone was asking if it was a Garicon that had the best extracts, and someone else thought it might be the um, the birch polypore. I was pretty sure it was a Fomatopsis of some sort. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Hello, Ifran. How you doing? Oh man, these bluets are good. No, mm. well, they're a little grassy. There's like, some grassiness. I mean, they they grow in grass, so they I think in a cream sauce. Kind of emphasizes the um, the mushroom flavor and reduces the grassiness a bit, but honestly, these are quite nice. Um, moss for fungi. Um, check out my website. The FAQ page has my recommendations of uh, of the books I like. I think you're not going to find a whole lot of very specific literature for southwestern Nevada because um, it's probably not a place that has a whole lot of mushrooms in it, but there's going to be some, you know. Mmm. Elizabeth, thank you so much for the gift. That's much appreciated. Um, you know, if I put some soy sauce in these, yeah, they could they could taste like chicken teriyaki. It is pretty damn good. The yeah, mushrooms and soy sauce is a really killer combo. That's very good. Mm. Yeah, these just taste like bluets. Buttery, salty. A little grassy, a little sweet. A little nutty. Um, book for New England. Um, there's a couple sort of like New England... East Coast books that are pretty good. Again, if you go to my website, some of those things are linked in the FAQ. Um, I'm trying to think about the books I use when I'm home with my parents. Hmm. I think there's like one of the Audubon books that's okay. Again, I'm going to be writing a book soon. I'm hoping to make it relatively general so I can recommend that to anyone, no matter where they live. Cook your Whittier with soy sauce and green onion. Sounds awesome. Maybe add some tofu and throw it on rice. Have I tried beefsteak? Oh yeah, I like beefsteak. I got a bunch of videos of that mushroom. Um, it's really crunchy and has the um, texture of almost like something between like raw tomato and tuna when it's, when it's raw. Um, and when you cook it, it gets a little more crunchy and solidified. But it's great in tacos. Um, I like cooking beef steak with meat because it does a great job of kind of like blending texture with meat and soaking up the fat. Um, I've also used it just on its own as a meat substitute, and it makes you know pretty decent steaky things. They're they're crunchy. They're not really like meaty, but it has a light lemony flavor, and it's and it's quite tasty. So, um, Stephen Shepard partner with Fungi Perfecti in Olympia. Cool, Elo. Yeah, I got one of the Paul Stamets bee, bee feeders, but I don't know, I put it outside for a couple of seasons and I used up all the extract. I don't know how much good it really did. It's kind of hard to tell. I think part of the idea of that project is to have it be those extracts everywhere. Mmm. Yum. Bluets are good. Yeah, desert truffles. Was, yeah, someone was telling me about truffles in the Middle East. 
and how they're huge. It sounded super cool. I guess what I'm saying in Israel is like truffles are like massive. But I wouldn't be surprised if they grow in other places in the Middle East. I'd be really interested to learn what kind of tree type they grow with. So, I'll point you guys back on the board here. Let's see the um, black trumpets and the elephant saddles that I've got here. Okay, interesting questions are starting to wane. I'm uh, I'm ready to put these mushrooms in the dryer. My bluets are cooked. I may uh, I may bid you guys a good night because it's been fun talking to you about these black trumpets and these elephant saddles and the bluets and even the uh, candy caps that I have here. It's a good good mixture of stuff. Lots of tasty mushies. I'm gonna go ahead and toss these all in the dryer. Yeah, I, I don't think they have those giant um, desert truffles in Nevada, but I do have heard of them in the uh, in the Middle East. So, sorry, my hair's a little chaotic. Um, if you guys would like to learn more from me, please check out my website, fascinatedbyfungi.com. It is linked in my bio. I have cool T-shirts. I've got mugs. I've got a calendar for 2020. Um, the dehydrator I have is. Hang on, I'll look. Uh, it's a Presto, Presto dehydrator. That's that's what I'm using. So, whoop, there you go. Um, anyhow, yeah, please feel free to check out my website. I've got cool stuff there. I'm on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, Twitch, uh, every imaginable form of social media I can think of. Again, if you want to learn more from me, please check out my website. I have one. Go there. It's linked in my bio. Um, Laterata Solata, thank you so much for the um, gift. That's much appreciated. I appreciate you guys very much, and I will bid you a good night and uh, wish you all well. So much love. Bye.